What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today we're going to be going through Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 15. And actually, uh, well, before we get started, I'm going to preach the gospel. And I'm also going to go through a scripture in the book of John. It said, first let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross so that through him that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, you truly give your life to him and that's what repent means to truly truly turn to God to give your life to him to be willing to to make that move to turn away from sin and follow him and if you believe in a sacrifice of Jesus then you repent and ask him to forgive you he will forgive you he will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life the Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom power discernment and many things the Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him repent and believe the gospel give your life to Jesus today he will give you eternal life now before we get started today this evening begins the final day of Sukkot the final day of the Feast of Tabernacles we're entering we're now entering the eighth day the last day and first before we get into the study uh, we're going to go over to the book of John real quick John chapter 7 All right, I'm going to read it from the beginning. After these things, Jesus was walking in Galilee, for he was unwilling to talk in Judea, which is uh, pretty much uh, pretty much modern-day Israel. Uh, well, Galilee is also a part of modern-day Israel, but Judea is uh, south of that. And I don't have that book I normally have with me, or I would show you it has some maps in there. But let me just read through this. After these things, Jesus was walking in Galilee, for he was unwilling to walk in Judea, because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the feast of the Jews, and I'll just say, uh, a lot of people misinterpret this as saying this is just a Jewish feast, a Jewish uh, tradition or something. But it's uh, one of the feasts of the Lord. It's one of God's commandments. And it will be kept in the millennial reign with whoever uh, is in there, whoever is in the millennial reign, meaning all of us as believers, as long as we make it to the kingdom, as long as we endure to the end. Now the Feast of the Jews, the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, was near. Therefore his brothers said to him, leave here and go into Judea that your disciples also may see your works, which you are doing. For no one does anything in secret when he, he himself seeks to be known publicly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers were believing in him. And so they, they weren't even believing in him. And, and all, I guess... 
I guess also they didn't have the faith to speak about him as much because every, not everybody was seeing all these miracles. He, he did have, he did have uh, groups of thousands following him. And they wanted to kill him because he was performing miracles, but um, but he wanted to uh, basically, basically they wanted him to reveal himself as Messiah. So Jesus said to, said to them, "My time is not yet here, but your time is always opportune. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil." Go up to the feast yourselves. I do not go up to this feast because my time has not yet fully come. Having said these things to them, he stayed in Galilee. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, speaking about his disciples, then he himself also went up, not publicly, but as if, but as if in secret. So the Jews were seeking him at the feast and were saying, where is he? There was much grumbling among the crowds concerning him. So I mean, he was he was the topic of discussion. He was the the main attraction, and and they hated him. And as he said, they hated him because he said the world hates you. Or he said the world the world cannot hate you because the world or the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. And uh, some of us, through the Holy Spirit, do the same thing. Testify against the world, against the ways of the world, against the people of the world, that the deeds are evil. And we're hated. So the Jews were seeking him at the feast. Again, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. Today is the eighth day. So the Jews were seeking him at the feast and were saying, where is he? There was much grumbling among the crowds concerning him. Some were saying, he is a good man. Others were saying, no, on the contrary, he leads the people astray. Yet no one was speaking openly of him for, the, for fear of the Jews. And this is uh, speaking about the religious leaders, the, the Pharisees. But when it was now the midst of the feast, and the, so this is the Feast of Tabernacles, it's a seven-day feast and an additional eighth day, so a total of eight like eight eight day feast in the midst of the feast but now or but when it but when it was now the midst of the feast Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach the Jews then were astonished saying how has this man become learned or learned having never been educated in other words educated through uh, the Jewish teachers and keep in mind um they taught the word of god but they taught it and same with mo many of the jewish most of judaism right now they follow what's written in the talmud they follow the traditions the traditions of the rabbis as jesus spoke against the traditions of the elders not just the word of god So this is what they're saying, uh, educated by them. The Jews were astonished, saying, How has this man become learned, having never been educated? Because he was speaking the word of God. Uh, but they also taught the traditions. So Jesus answered them, answered them and said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Speaking about the Father. If anyone is willing to do his will, then he will know of this of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak for myself. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory. But he who is seeking the glory of the one who sent him, he is true, and there is no unrighteousness in him. See, we need to make sure we're not seeking any glory for ourselves, but only the glory of God, the glory for him for his kingdom and for the salvation of others. And so Jesus said, did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you carries out the law because they were 
keeping the traditions over top of the actual commandments. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you carries out the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who seeks to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one deed, and you all marvel. For this reason Moses has given you circumcision, not, not because it's from Moses, but from the fathers. And on the Sabbath you circumcise a man. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses will not be broken, because uh, circumcision was to happen on the eighth day, after a baby is born. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so the law of Moses will not be broken. Are you angry because I made an entire man well on the Sabbath? Because they, they were condemning him for healing on the Sabbath. They were saying, oh, he's doing work. Because he would heal somebody on the Sabbath. He said, do, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So some of the people in of Jerusalem were saying, Is this not the man that we're seeking to kill? Look, he is speaking publicly, and they're saying nothing to him. The rulers do not really know that this is the Christ, do they? However, we know that where this man is from. Well, so, let me just continue. However, we know where this man is from, but wherever, whenever the Christ may come, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out in the temple, teaching and saying, You both know me and know where I am from, and I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. I know him, because I am from him. And I just lost my place for one second. He said, I know him. I know him because I, because I am from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to seize him. And no man laid his hand on him because his hour had not yet come. His time to be crucified had not yet come. But many of the crowd believed in him. And they were saying, when the Christ comes, will he, not, he will not perform more signs than, this, than those which this man has, will he? Because he was performing many miracles. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to seize him. So they were after him the whole time. He was being basically hunted. He was being targeted. And just like many of us are these days. But even, you know, even more so and openly. Therefore Jesus said, For a little while longer I am with you. Then I will go to he, him who sent me. You will seek me and will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Because he was going to, after being resurrected, he went back to the Father. Went back to heaven. But they didn't understand this. The Jews then said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? He is not intending to go to the dispersion among the Greeks, Greeks and teach the Greeks, is he? What is this statement that he said, You will seek me and will not find me, and where I am you cannot come? Now on the last day, this is speaking about today, beginning this evening, this evening, the evening of Monday the 22nd, 27th, to the evening of Tuesday, basically sundown to sundown, the evening of Tuesday the 28th is the last day. See, the Feast of Tabernacles is an eight-day eight celebration, eight-day feast. That's, well, the Bible mentions uh, a seven-day feast and then a final eighth day, and, you know, it, it represents 7,000 years of mankind, the last se last thousand years being a thousand-year reign of Christ, and then the eighth day being eternity, representing eternity. That's why it's separate. But, uh, There's eight days, and this, and we are now, as of about two, I'll say two hours ago, two and a half hours ago, here on the East Coast, we entered the last day, the last uh, eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and this is the last day that 
uh, Jesus is speaking about right here, that the Bible is speaking about right here in John chapter 7, verse 37. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. One more time, now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I'll just, I'll just stop it right there. And get into Numbers chapter 15. But I wanted to read that. Uh, specifically that part. Because it's about. This eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. See, Jesus celebrated it. And we should as well. And so the Feast of Tabernacles. The, the first and the eighth day. Are rest days. And also, since it's a seven-day feast, there's also going to be a Sabbath day, which could land on the first day or the eighth day. Well, um, it would be the first and the eighth day, if that was the case, if it landed on the first day. Or one of the other days in this time, it was about in the midst of the week, was the regular Sabbath. But... The Feast of Tabernacles also, as I mentioned earlier, will be celebrated during the millennial reign. When Jesus comes back to reign here on earth for a thousand years. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah that all the nations, uh, all the nations of the world will come up to Jerusalem. And this is going to be the, the new Jerusalem. Will come up to Jerusalem year by year to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles and to worship the King. King Jesus, King Yeshua. Now let's get into Numbers chapter 15. And in the last chapter, Numbers 14, we saw that God um, told the Israelites, 20 years old and upward, that that they won't be able to enter the land, the promised land. That they're going to die there in the wilderness. But their sons and daughters are going to enter the promised land. Numbers 15. Now Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you, when you enter the land where you, where you are to live. And so right after that, he gives them a command as of what to do when they enter the land. But this is mainly for those 19 and under because those 20 and up more specifically it says the men I, I, mean, I guess the women too are, uh, aren't going to enter the land speak to the sons of Israel and say to them when you enter the land where you, where you are to live which I am giving you then make an offering by fire to Yahuwah a burnt offering or a sacrifice so a burnt offering or a sacrifice to a, fulfill a special vow or as a free will offering or in your appointed times to make a soothing aroma to Yahuwah from the herd or from the flock. So either a burnt offering or a, a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, a votive offering or a free will offering. So those are two type of peace offerings. 
the two types of the peace offerings are the free will offering or a votive offering. Um, offering that has to do with a vow. He said either that or a burnt offering. The one who presents his offering shall present to Yahuwah a grain offering. And actually, from verse 4, I'm going to read some of these out of the HCSB. I read my uh, the studies mainly in the NASB. But this one I'm going to read out of the HCSB um, because it gives us the modern measurements. and it's, So it's easier for us to picture, to understand. The one presenting his offering to Yahuwah, to the Lord, must also present a grain, actually, uh, yeah, the one presenting his offering to, to Yahuwah must also present a grain offering of two quarts of fine flour mixed with a quart of oil. Two quarts of flour mixed with a quart of oil. And so, this right here, a quart is also, if I remember right, I do have it pulled up here, which I'll check on it in a second. I believe it's uh, equal to 32 ounces. And this here, uh, mo most Gatorades and stuff are 30 or around 32 ounces. This was this is 28. This is uh, the size of a regular Gatorade or Powerade. Um, it's 28 ounces, and so a quart is about that size, maybe just a little bit bigger quart is also a quarter of a gallon and just to give you all a picture of how much this is speaking about so with the offering and as we're going to see here in a little bit they can offer either a cow a bull more specifically or a ram or or a lamb and but with the animal sacrifice as an offering to God, either as a regular burnt offering or as a, as a peace offering, which can be either a free will offering or as a vow. Uh, they're, to, they're to all offer, once they enter the promised land, they're to all to offer, make this offering to God. And this is, uh, again, along with the animal sacrifice, which could be some different things, there's also going to be a grain offering and a drink offering to go along with the animal sacrifice when they enter the land. And uh, and so, as we're going to read through here, depending on which animal sacrifice it was, the, there's a different uh, grain offering and a and di different uh, drink offering, depending on which sacrifice it is. And the bigger, so the biggest sacrifice, as we're going to read here in a little bit, the biggest... Uh, grain and drink offering went along with the bull went along with the cow the second biggest went along with the the ram and then the smallest uh went along with the lamb so the one presenting his offering to yahuwah must also present a grain offering of two quarts of fine flour so again a quart is about the size of a gatorade uh, or Powerade, uh, one of the one of the, the bigger ones, uh, thirty-two ounce one or twenty-eight ounce one, about that size. So it says must present a green offering of two quarts of fine flour mixed with a quart of oil. Prepare a quart of wine as a drink offering with a burnt offering or sacrifice of each lamb. So, about this much oil, about this much wine, and then about this much oil, along with twice as much flour to make this offering. And so that's for the lamb, if, if the offering is a lamb, which it didn't say that specifically yet, uh, but... We're about to go through the the ram and the bull, and then we're going to see that the first one is speaking about a lamb. If you prepare a grain offering with a ram, it must be four quart four quarts of fine flour, basically four of those bottles, 
mixed with a third of a gallon of oil. So again, uh, four quarts would be about a gallon. Four quarts is a gallon. And so this is a different combination here with the for the grain offering for the ram. And I know there's reason for all this. We just don't understand it. We don't know it. We don't know why. But there's got to be a reason for all this, why, why God had, does the different offerings in different ways. If you prepare a grain offering with a ram, because there's deep, deeper meaning about all this, it must be four quarts of fine flour mixed with a third of a gallon, third of a gallon of oil. So again, a, th a third of a gallon is a little bit, a little bit more than one quart. And just picture, picture like a, a third is 33%. Um, a quart is, uh, it says a third of a gallon, 33% of a gallon. A quart is 25% of a gallon, uh, a quarter of a gallon. If you prepare a green offering with a ram, it must be four quarts of fine flour so the whole gallon of fine flour uh, with a third of a gallon of oil. Also present a third of a gallon of wine for a drink offering as a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah. If you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a fellowship offering to Yahuwah. And as, so fellowship, uh, I don't know if that would just be the free will offering or I would have to review that but as a fellowship, or so basically a burnt offering or a peace offering to fulfill a vow. And actually, let me let me pull this up back in the NASB real quick. It says when you prepare a bull as a burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a special vow, or for peace offerings to Yahuwah. Back in the HCSB. A grain offering of six quarts of fine flour. So, in other words, basically, this six of these of flour, or close to it. See, the for the lamb it was two, for the ram it was four, and for the bull it's six. six quarts of fine flour mixed with two quarts of oil which is half a gallon instead of a third with the ram or a quarter with uh, the lamb a grain offering of six quarts of fl fine flour mixed with two quarts of oil must be, pre be presented with a bull also present two quarts in other words of about two of these which would be half of a gallon contrary to the third of the gallon with the ram of of wine as a drink as a drink offering it is a fine it is a, it is a fire offering of a pleasing aroma to yahuwah this is to be done for each ox or the cow each ox ram lamb or goat so i guess the first one with the two two quarts of uh, flour would be referring to the the goat and the lamb it didn't specify but the other two that were specified were the ox and the ram the cow and the ram this is how you must prepare each of them no matter how many every israelite is to prepare these things in this way when he presents a fire offering as a as a pleasing aroma to yahuwah yahuwah When a foreigner resides with you or somebody else is among you and wants to prepare a fire offering as a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah, he is to do exactly as you do throughout your generations. The assembly is to have the same statute both for you and the foreign resident as a permanent statute throughout your generations. And the foreigner, or you and the foreigner, will be alike before Yahuwah. 
the same ordinance will apply to both you and the foreigner who, res who resides with you. Yahuwah instructed Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, After you enter the land where I am bringing you, you are to offer a contribution to Yahuwah from what you eat, from the food of the land. And so this is different. A contribution, and the contributions normally just went to the priests. Um, because the priests were doing the work in the tabernacle, they were ministering to God. So most of the time when we see the uh, contribution offering, it's just going to the priests. So one more time. Speak to the Israelites and tell them, After you enter the land where I am bringing you, you are to offer a contribution to Yahuwah. When you eat the food of the land, you are to offer a loaf of your first batch of dough as a contribution. So their first batch of dough, um, which we you know comes from uh, grain and stuff, and then is made into dough and then baked into bread, you are to offer a loaf from your first batch of dough as a contribution. Offer it just like the contribution for, from, the, from the threshing floor. Throughout your generations, you were to give to Yahuwah a contribution from the first batch of your dough. When you sin unintentionally, and actually, let me, hold on. Let me go back to the NASB. But when you unwittingly fail or sin un unintentionally, and I, actually it's probably a better translation in the HCSB with that, this line. But this says, when you unwittingly fail and do not observe all these commandments which Yahuwah has spoken to Moses, even all that Yahuwah has commanded, commanded you through Moses, from the day when Yahuwah gave commandment and onward throughout your generations, then it shall be, if it is done unintentionally, unintentional sin, without the knowledge of the congregation. And so this first one that we're speaking about here is a, if the whole congregation sins unintentionally. Then it shall be if it is done unintentionally without the knowledge of the congregation. That all the, congrega all the congregation shall offer one bull for a burnt offering at the, as a soothing of Roma to Yahuwah. With its grain offering and drink offering. So the same type of thing. The, Except this one is specifically a bull. With a grain offering and a sin offering. According to the ordinance. And one male goat for a sin offering. So a bull and a goat, if the congregation sins unintentionally, they'll offer a bull and a goat, along with a grain offering and a, a drink offering. It says, Then the priest shall make atonement for all the congregation of the sons of Israel, and they will be forgiven, for it was an error, and they have brought their offering and offering by fire to Yahuwah, and their sin offering before Yahuwah for their error. So all the congregation of the sons of Israel will be forgiven with the alien who sojourns among them. For it happened, it happened to all the people in error, through error. Also, if one person sins unintentionally, then he shall offer a one-year-old female goat for a sin offering. So if it's a single person that sins unintentionally, he's to offer a one-year-old female goat for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement before Yahuwah for the persons who go astray when he sins unintentionally make an atonement for him that he may be forgiven. You shall have one law for him who does anything unintentionally. For him who is native among the sons of Israel and for the alien who sojourns among them. And this is speaking about, well, in general for any 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 foreigner that, that lives there with the Israelites. But we know that when they came out of Egypt, uh, there was a the Israelites, and 
in a mixed multitude of Egyptians and maybe other people that came with them. And I don't know why I'm so tired. I, I was fine right before I started doing this video. And now I'm just extremely tired all of a sudden. Uh, maybe it's spiritual attacks. Maybe it's uh, some other attack of the enemy. I don't know. But you know, it just hit me out of nowhere. You shall have one... You shall have one law for him who does anything unintentionally, for him who is native among the sons of Israel, and for the alien who, so, alien who sojourns among them. But the person who does anything defiantly, whether he is native or an alien, that one is blaspheming Yahuwah. And that person shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of Yahuwah and has broken his commandment. That person shall be completely cut off. His guilt will be on him. So, intentional sin. Intentional sin is blaspheming God. And blaspheming the Holy Spirit, it can be speaking against the Holy Spirit, which uh, Jesus kind of gave the example of that. But it can be blaspheming by rejecting and rebelling against being defiant against the holy spirit when the holy spirit is telling you to do something or to, more specifically to not do something and you just do it anyway even even though the holy spirit is telling you don't do this don't do this and you just do it anyway you can blaspheme the holy spirit which there's no forgiveness for and you can lose your salvation we need to see god is very merciful very, very, very merciful. But we need to be careful. We need to not test God. We need to not play around with Him. God is serious. Let's not play games with Him. Because He can remove our name from the book of life. And it's... Uh, It started just really blowing. But he can remove our name from the book of life. Let's not play with God. Let's be right with him. And so I'm going to read. Here out of. Hebrews 10 real quick. Hebrews 10 mentions this. Hebrews 10 verse 26. Starting in 26. For if we go on sinning willfully. Intentional sin. After receiving the knowledge of the truth. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a terrifying expectation of judgment. And the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three two or three witnesses how much severe punishment do you think do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of god and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted or blasphemed the spirit of grace the holy spirit how much severe punishment do you think he will deserve? Let me just read this one more time. For if we go on sinning willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much, how much severe punishment do you think he will deserve? who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, meaning they were already saved, and has insulted the Spirit of grace, in other words, blasphemed the Holy Spirit. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. 
It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Let's not play with him. One more time back here in Numbers. In Numbers chapter uh, 15 verse 30. But the person who does anything defiantly. In other words intentional sin. Whether he is native or an alien. That one is blaspheming Yahuwah. And again, Jesus, when speaking about it, said, um, if, if someone blasphemes the Father or the Son, he will have forgiveness. Forgiveness is available, but, but anyone who has, who is blaspheming the Holy Spirit has no forgiveness. And so, I believe, you know, if the Holy Spirit is convicting us of something, telling us, don't do this, don't do this, and we just defiantly sin against God anyway. See, I believe it begins, I'm not God, I'm not the judge, I just know I've screwed up a lot, and I believe it begins with grieving the Holy Spirit. But if we continually, defiantly defy Him and reject the Holy Spirit, reject the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that we will eventually blaspheme the Holy Spirit and lose our salvation. I know God has forgiven me for different things I've done throughout my walk, but Let's not play with God. God is very merciful, but He is very serious as well. We cannot play with Him. This is serious. Very serious. One more time. But the person who does anything defiantly, whether he is native or an alien, that one is blaspheming Yahuwah, and that person shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of Yahuwah, and has broken his commandment, that person shall be cut off, completely cut off, completely cut off. His guilt will be on him. Don't test God. Don't test him. Make sure you're right with him now. And do not intentionally sin. This is something we can't do. At all. Now, while the sons of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And so this guy was intentionally sinning. He knew that they couldn't, they, they weren't supposed to be going out gathering wood on the Sabbath. They're supposed to get it done the day before. So he was intentionally just, intentionally just defying the command of God. While God is there in the in the camp, in the tent of meeting, but God no longer dwells at, at that Ark of the Covenant, but He dwells in us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God was there among them. And they knew what, what to do, what, what to not do. And He just intentionally went out and was gathering wood on the Sabbath. Now, while the sons of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. And they put him in custody because he had not declared, because it, it had not been declared, what should be done to him. Then Yahuwah said to Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death with stones, just as Yahuwah had commanded Moses. Yahuwah also spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and tell them that they should make for themselves tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and that they should put on the tassel 
of each corner a quarter blue. It shall be a tassel for you to look at and to remember the commandments of Yahuwah, Yahuwah of the Lord. So as to do them and to not follow after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you have played the harlot. So that you may remember to do all my commandments and be holy to your God. I, Yahuwah, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I, Yahuwah. Or I am Yahuwah, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahuwah, your God. I am the Lord, your God. But it's his name, I am Yahuwah, Yahweh, your God. And so as far as the tassels, this is also spoken about in the... Uh, I'll show you, uh, I, I, I do have ta tassels that I wear. I don't know how we, you know, you see them a little bit. They're not, they're not real long and they don't have to be. They just have to be tassels. And as you see, it has a quarter blue in it, has blue in it. And, uh, you know, tassels on the four corners, four corners of your garment. So I got, a got four of them on my belt. And, uh, you know, it's just a command to be obedient to God. This is, I mean, it's, it's just an obedient, um, it's another, uh, one of the commandments. And it's in order to remember the commandments of God. It's in order to remind us. And this is also spoken about in the New Testament uh, multiple times. See, Jesus wore them. Jesus wore tassels. He wore these, uh, well, in Hebrew, it would be tzitzis. He wore them, and there's, the one, there's one of the famous stories of his healing happened. Uh, the Bible says, depending on translation, a lot of them say the woman with the issue of blood, she had, a, she, she had bled. Um, I, don't, I don't know what exactly the condition was, but uh, she had an issue of, of blood. And for like 20 years, I can't remember exactly how long, maybe it's 18 years. Um, and she just wanted to be healed. And she thought to herself, even if I reach out and touch the hem of his garment, the corner of his garment, the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And what that was see a lot of them wore robes back then and at the bottom of the robe would have a uh, have these uh, tassels on it and she said if I even touch the tassel that's what it that's what it's referring that's what she was talking about that's what the Bible's talking about she said if I even reach out and touch it, his tassel I will be healed and she she was healed immediately and Jesus said who touched me because he knew that uh, power had gone out from him and, and healed somebody. And it's through her faith. Because she had faith that even if I just touch, the, touch his tassel, touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she was. And it's just amazing. And she admitted to it. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Because she, like I said, she, she admitted to being the one that touched him. And, and it's through her faith that, that uh, it was done for her. And uh, so Jesus wore tassels like, like this. Uh, I, I don't know how long they were. What color they what color they were? But he he wore tassels. But he did rebuke the Pharisees. The and there's another instance in the New Testament where where it mentions these tassels. Um. And some translations say phylacteries, I think. Um. But it's speaking about the tzitzis, the tassels. And he rebuked them for having extra long tassels 
and walking around saying prayers in public in order to be recognized by the people as like holy men, even though their hearts were kind of wicked. And and uh, you know because that, well that that's what was in her heart. They they wanted to be recognized by people, so they we, they would wear these long tassels and make prayers in public and stuff like that, rather than being recognized by God. They wanted to be recognized by the people, and uh, so he rebuked them for that. But he but that's nothing against the tassels. Jesus wore tassels. And we should do everything that he did. And uh, I believe it's more specifically a command for for men. But this is a... I'm not going to get into this, this conversation, this type of study right now, whether women should, should wear the tassels or not. But I believe it's, uh, it's mentioned in the word as specifically... Uh, and actually, let me... Let me see what it says. I just read it. it says this, the sons of Israel. It said, speak to the sons of Israel and tell them that they should make for themselves tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and that they should put on the tassel of each corner a cord of blue. It shall be a tassel for you to look at and to remember the commandments of Yahuwah, so as to do them and to not follow your own heart and your own eyes after which you have played the harlot, so that you may remember to do all my commandments and be holy to Yah to be holy to your God. I am Yahuwah your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahuwah your God. Hallelujah. God is great. God is amazing and uh one of these days and actually you know, it's interesting because this, uh, there in John 7, it mentions at, at the last day, on the last day, the great day of the feast. But then there's also another scripture where, here, in the, here also in the book of John, where the last day is mentioned. And let me uh, look at it real quick. And this was in the previous chapter. This was in chapter 6. And let me just read through a little bit of this. I'm, I'm not saying necessarily that I believe that this last day here mentioned in... I mean, you know, it's, the last day is also the, the Sabbath. And the Sabbath of the Lord, a day to the Lord is a thousand years, the Bible says. And the Sabbath to the Lord will be the thousand year reign of Christ. And on that last day, um, people will be raised to live before him. But on the day of the Lord. But uh, but just because it says last day and it, because it would be good to read. I'm going to just read a little bit of this real quick. Real quick uh, so let's see. I'm going to read from verse 30, 35 here in uh, John chapter 6. Jesus said to, them, said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. See, he may be referring to this last day, which is, begins now. We need to be ready. This last day, we need to be ready. For the will, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise Him up on the last day. 
Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he not say, I have come down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, that, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from me, learned from the Father, comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who was from God. He has seen the Father. Truly I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. Hallelujah. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat eat of it and not die. And the, the bread represents his body being broken for us. And this is what communion represents. Uh, we eat the bread because it represents uh, eating the bread of life, his body being broken for us, accepting his sacrifice. And the wine represents his blood being spilled for us, accepting his uh, shed blood for us. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I also get, will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And let me see if the last day is mentioned any more right here. I don't think so. And I'll just stop it there. But I just wanted to read that section there out of John chapter 6 as well. And we are on this last day, the last day of Sukkot. Last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, however you want to say it. And... Um, It's about it's about six in the morning now in uh, in Israel. Israel is seven hours ahead of the East Coast. It's eleven twenty here at night. And so it's about six twenty in the morning over in Israel on the eighth day, on the last day. Although, you know, the ca the calendar might be wrong. I lean to. I mean, I'm, I'm using I'm celebrating it on. Uh, the calendar that the Jews celebrated on uh, as far as all the feast days and I ha I've done that for the last two years based on in 2014 and 2015 there were um, blood moons that landed exactly on the feast days in the spring and the fall and I believe that in 2014 and 2015 and I believe that was a sign from God using that calendar and uh Although it may be wrong, and Jesus may come a different day, and and I personally believe he's, you know, I believe he gives us reasons to believe a lot of different times, but I do believe uh, Isaiah eighteen leans toward points us toward um, right before summer, right at the beginning of summer, but we will see. No man knows the day or the hour which can also be a reference to the fall feast. But uh, we just have to play our part by being ready, by being right with God, by overcoming. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him. Let's do his will in all things. Let's make sure that Holy Spirit, see, we, we are the lamps. We are the torches. And we need that oil in us, which is the Holy Spirit, in order to produce the fire, that light. Um which uh, is obedience to God. The Holy Spirit works in us to produce obedience. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's preach the gospel. Let's also shine in his light. Let's do his will in all things. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. There's not much time left. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for your sins rose again three days later showed up for 40 days to his people and uh, showing that he was alive and then was taken back to the kingdom of God repent and believe the gospel give your life to Jesus today he is soon to come and judge this world but he's soon also at the same time to come and save his people. Which side will you be on? That's the end of Numbers 15. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all.
Shalom.